श्री यूपी सिंह मिस्टर राजदान हाई कमिश्नर सिद्धू कॉलीग्स ऑन द डायस एंड इन द ऑडियंस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू हियर टू दिस वर्ल्ड रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी टेक्नोलॉजी कांग्रेस इट इज एन ओकेजन वेन we get together to figure out where is it that we have reached but also to see how far we have to go i want to apologize for the delay in coming here but i hope that this was in the in the process uh, bringing in renewables into a sector where it has been relatively uh, uh, limited till now now as we move ahead i think there are two or three things which have been mentioned which the high commissioner mentioned which mr rajdan mentioned which are already on the cards but i think it is important to see how these changes are happening and why they are happening clearly renewables is driven by a number of factors in india we have seen that the drivers have been the desire to have in for many years a local energy source to meet energy access more recently it has been pushed also by our desire to provide affordable energy affordable clean energy to all and obviously the our pledges to the paris accord of having 40% of the uh, installed generation electricity generation capacity in this country coming from renewables is a third driver to this process as we look at these drivers there are we note either the same or similar drivers in most other countries the high commissioner talked about the drivers in australia i think the uh, the program that they have launched on batteries has been a huge step ahead in as much as uh, it represents one of the lowest battery costs that we have seen anywhere in the world of the order of 200 dollars per kilowatt hour of storage note that only 7 years ago in 2011 the lowest price in a bid for batteries that we got was 1000 dollars per kilowatt hour of storage we have seen therefore a five fold decrease over the last 7 years will this continue in the future there are those who say that it will there are others who say that the lowest hanging fruit have been obtained and the amount of uh, reduction that we will get will now be on the margins be that as may i think we are in a striking range of a point at which solar and storage or wind and storage can together produce electricity which would be competitive with electricity produced from coal or from gas i for one had not thought that this would happen during my professional lifetime if this happens and people say it can be anywhere between 5 years to 10 years in the future if this happens we see a massively changed electricity system but as we have seen these changes never happen by themselves yes solar and batteries will change but we are also seeing huge changes in for example the biomass area where again changes in technology both on the solid biomass gasification side as well as on the liquid biomass the fuel side are changing both the use patterns as well as the economies of scale that we are seeing research is telling us that technologies for converting biomass into liquid fuels is at a stage where the so called third generation of biofuels could become uh, uh, could become uh, competitive again by the middle of the next decade again if this happens it will be a huge change in the way that we look at the system uh, the energy system in the world which is based on hydrocarbon fuels the challenge would be to get the uh, uh, the 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 raw material rather than 
the, the raw, raw material for converting the uh, uh, biomass, the, the lignin that is needed to convert the biomass, rather than the availability, the geopolitics of the availability of current and uh, currently used hydrocarbon fuels. Where does this take us? I think there are two issues where, as a community, we still need to focus on. One is the conversion of these technologies into large scale use. There will be leaders in this country, in Australia, in the US, in the European Union, and so on. But we need to move beyond the one or two or three into the hundreds and the thousands. This issue of going from the few to the many is not easy. It is certainly not, uh, it is not rapid enough. So rapidity in dissemination is one of the key areas that I think as a community we fo need to focus on. How will this happen? How will we create manufacturing capacities, servicing facil facilities, and the supply chains to make it happen? Will we need new business models? These are issues that I think we need to focus on as we talk of technological advancements. The second issue that I would like to uh, highlight is that as we move towards the deployment of these technologies into the larger market, a key challenge is public acceptability. If we look at the land that is needed to set up the solar or wind plants, or the competing uses of biomass, all of these present challenges into how we look at the development, the large scale development of these renewable energy technologies. Again, there are no magic answers. Each of these will be decided by a range of public consultations, public discussions. Some of these have and will obviously be decided by the most difficult of all means, legal methods as well. Again, as a community, we need to be ready to look at the windows of opportunity where these, uh, these uh, uh, interventions can be planned. Finally, I think it is important for all of us as we gather here to focus on what is it that each one of us can do to move these forwards. Many of us are from the technology arena. We will focus on making our technologies better. My suggestion is we need to move out to talk to more people, whether they're users or financiers or the people who are supply services in order to see how we can most rapidly move ahead. Again, I welcome you all to the World Renewable Energy Technology Conference. Thank you.